biggest uh, archaeological institute in the world, has more than 300 employees. It has uh, departments worldwide. Uh, most important are in Rome, Madrid, Athens, Cairo, Istanbul, and the newest is in Peking, Beijing. <coughs> it uh, has excavations in some of the most important archaeological sites in the world, so Troja, Olympia, Pergamon, uh, Pompeii, Cart uh, Cartago, and so on. I don't uh, say more than this. Uh, Maybe you should say it's a federal agency, actually. It's like a really high institution. Yeah, as you say it. Uh, <laughs> and, <laughs> and actually, it's a part of the German uh, foreign office. And so it's also very important for the German foreign politics. It started. It all started around uh, 2009, as I realized that someone has written an article in Wikipedia about the German Archaeological Institute in Rome, the most important of the departments of the DAI, and it was a good article. And I figured out who was it, and it was one of the scientists working in Rome. And I was so encouraged, 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 <laughs> encouraged uh, because of that, that I asked in the center, in the main department in Berlin, if we maybe can do something together. And I got a quick mail, and I was invited, and there was a first meeting, and everything goes slowly and slowly. It's a marathon, it's a sprint. But in uh, the beginning of the last year, they realized that Wikipedia brings up a lot of traffic to their own uh, projects at Aachner. And uh, so they, they newly contact us, contact us, and now they ask us what could we do for them. And we had a meeting, and we also talked about that we have the opportunity to install a Wikipedia residence. It was not really planned, it was a not so important point in the meeting, but shortly I got mail. They asked me, would you like to do it? And of course, yes, <laughs> I've done it. Uh, and in the summer 2012, I was for a half year Wikipedia resident at the DAI. What uh, does the DAI, maybe someone of you don't know it, he is a kind of person who brings Wikimedia projects and the institution, the Galat institution together. You can work in some different ways. You can workshops with staff, you can have conferences with the staff and Wikimedians, depending what we're doing. You can encourage uh, encourage the uh, community. What we learned in the German Wikipedia is um, <coughs> contest is the most important thing in this way, the best way to encourage the community. You can try to uh, do photo excursions in the special uh, this case, this case, in this special case, this was not the, one of the the options. <coughs> you have to talk with the, with the with the staff about things like license matters and so on. And it's not not ever easy to come forward in these points. Okay. What I've what, uh, done, for example, in edit contest, last year we had the Olympic Games. Olympia is one of the most important sites where the DAI is uh, active. And uh, last year we had a real big exhibition in um, Berlin, depending the ancient Olympia, Olympia. So we had an Olympia contest. It all started slow. But then, at the end, we had hundreds of uh, articles, most of them new, some were 
become better than before, and it was at the end success. It were not so much people uh, writing the articles, but the result was not that. I was uh, visiting some of the departments, so Madrid, Rome, Athens, and Istanbul, but also in Germany, I was in Munich, where a department is, I was in Frankfurt, and Bonn. <coughs> Everywhere I made uh, pictures, and some of them are already at Commons, but I made so much, more than 5,000, I think. Um, needs some time until we are all uploaded. And what uh, we all don't believe in the beginning, one of the main things I had to do is, uh, was talking to the press. I never in my life uh, talked so often with press and they wanted, wanted to know so much things. Well, okay, but if you had not so much things, but <laughs> always the same, but Actually, we but have again, again. the major newspapers covering the story, and uh, and also radio stations and television stations uh, going for it because they, this was like really fully invented. But <laughs> Wikimedia or Wikipedia and residents actually came to work with one of the most highly <coughs> reputed institutions in Germany. We had some some success uh, within the DAI. Two thirds of the staff uh, was in my presentations, and I hope they knew now more about Wikipedia than before. Hopefully, uh, they know more about Wikipedia, about free licenses, about our problems, about what we can do, what we don't can do, and so on. And maybe the most important thing, what we what we reached as a goal was the DIA staff can write articles now in their office time. Not the whole time, of course, but sometimes if they think it's a good idea to write about the work also in Wikipedia, it's allowed for them to do it. And uh, in the next month, nobody knows exactly when, the website of the DAI will be new relaunched and it should be linked with Wikipedia, and we will see how much this will bring for us and for them. So. Thank you, Markus. Um, well, um, I think um, still we could have we could have done better. Like we had some new articles, we had some photos, we had some. Uh, administrative uh, regulations favorable for us but we um, came to the conclusion it could have been better and um, we, we started an evaluation with the staff of the um, um, German <coughs> Archaeological Institute and to find out like what were the reasons why it, it, it is not working well better after a half a year of Wikipedia and residents being there so uh, we first thing is um, we found that there was a lack of resources, uh, especially in time, like the staff, especially scientific staff in, within the institution is uh, so crap with, with work, they really find it hard to get some spare time to publish in Wikipedia. Um, uh, one moment for the... Uh, um, Oh, they, they do have lots uh, of photos in their archives and really a very nice collection. And for instance, they have uh, many photos that should be uh, considered as public domain because they are so old, like uh, from the end of the 19th century. But unfortunately, uh, those photos were taken under very uncertain legal conditions. And as long as we don't have um, a political solution for often works, uh, this will always remain a big issue within the institutions. Um, then we also had to face uh, prejudices uh, within the staff opposing the Wikimedia idea in itself because uh, as you may realize many of those scientific uh, sci scientists uh, they're used to publish in order to um, 
foster their reputation as scientists. So when they are collaborating in a Wikipedia article, they feel it's kind of a waste of a time because uh, there will, this will not add to their reputation. So it takes them some time to realize that they will gain through other ways. And this, um, this is a process we're still working on. Um, what we didn't reflect in the beginning and had to learn throughout our um, half a year experience is that there are stakeholders without our outside our reach that could cause disturbances. Um, like, uh, of course, um, a big institute as the German Archaeological Institute has many partners, is uh, deeply intertwined with the institutions such as big universities. So when we called for uh, a conference and said, yeah, well, now we are working, collaborating here with the DII and uh, we are even doing university programs, they got really upset and said, oh, no, this is not true. And uh, you can't uh, collaborate with Wikipedia because you, you may not quote Wikipedia in universities. So we got some problems there, but um, finally we could solve them. Um, altogether, um, I would resume these, uh, the problems we had um, as a lack of institutional readiness. This is something that goes through all our collaborations. The GLAM institutions have very vague ideas of what would be actually the outcome of a collaboration. And, uh, and maybe we too are not really sure what is it, what we actually want to gain from our collaborations. So institutional readiness is maybe a, a slogan that covers many of the problems we face, not only within the German Archaeological Institute, but within our other corporations as well. So we decided to have a, um, a slight change of policy. Um, we, we came to a conclusion that it was, um, we, we should not have a sole person, an individual as a Wikipedian in resident um, interacting with the institution to have it all on his shoulders in that case. Um, but we decided we should back him up um, more as an institution and have the two institutions to collaborate with each other. And then defining precise projects within that a common strategy. And this led to a, a big symposium we had in March uh, 2013, this, this March actually. And we had that, um, as Marcus said, the uh, German Archaeological Institute is part of the Foreign Office. So we had that in the library of the Foreign Office in Berlin, quite a fancy place. And there gathered um, 50 scientists and laymen to uh, discuss the challenge of digitization in the humanities. And they even came to a conclusion. Um, we do have a little film, you see the link down there, but it would take us too much time. We may just pop in for some brief uh, seconds. Um, well, their conclusion was that it's actually a chance for science and citizens, and we call it citizen science, that um, it really helps to, uh, to bring uh, citizens and science together, or like laymen and scientists together, um, by creating proper projects where they could interact. Um, I think we're good in time, so I just let's briefly look at the... Um, Video. Wikidata trifft Archäologie. In der Bibliothek des Auswärtigen Amtes trafen sich 50 Archäologen und Archäologen. Sie diskutierten die Herausforderungen des digitalen Zugangs für das gemeinsame Anliegen. Das Deutsche Archäologische Institut, kurz DAI, richtete zusammen mit Wikimedia Deutschland das Symposium Wikidata trifft. Und, und äh, monatlich für 450 Millionen Menschen quasi weltweit das Einstiegsportal für Wissen. Wikimedia Deutschland, der Förderverein hinter der Wikipedia, steht ein für die Verbreitung des Fra Das Deutsche Archäologische Institut steht für weltweite Grundlagenforschung im Bereich der Archäologie und Altertumswissenschaften. In 36 Ländern und mit 20 Abteilungen arbeiten die Forscher des Instituts.
brief idea what, what the symposium was all about. We had like scientists uh, talking about the Roman Empire or uh, pre most precisely uh, about their digitized data project on that topic. And uh, then we also presented our common project, um, the first citizen science pr um, project for the German Archaeological Institute, which is uh, a, uh, a new tool. And um, we call it the, the Limus map. Maybe you have heard about it already. Um, we do, I can show it to you here on the, uh, on the website as well. Actually, um, we harvested from many different sources uh, data on uh, military force uh, on the Roman Empire, on the frontiers of the Roman Empire. And we link that data into uh, um, with Wikipedia articles, like, and then you can go through time if you take this. Uh, uh, oh, it's not really. The internet is a bit slow here. We will wait for time. But when you click on one of those, uh, you can see that um, it only it doesn't only give you the name of the four, but it also um, helps you to get to its Wikipedia article. Um, this one is very short, so there's still some job to do on it. Um, so I'll give it to you in a brief summary what it is able to do. It's an interactive map that offers different pictures, like a travel through time by um, video or animation. <laughs> And you may search for historical force, like if you know in your region there is a, an old Roman fort, you can find it precisely there on the map. Um, it gives you information um, uh, deepening in, like zooming in um, on, on that fort in the Wikipedia article in different languages. And uh, you can zoom in and out on the Roman Empire, so you can have either the, re the the large overview of the whole empire, or just uh, going very close into like tiny um, geographical areas. This is the first time such a, an interactive map has been created, like, not only as a collaboration in between volunteers and, and scientists, but there has not been such a map before, so we are pretty proud of it. And it is creating opportunities for Wikipedians or any in the NAT community and scientists to collaborate in order to foster the dissemination of, of knowledge, which, is, which should be our target for all of us. Okay, uh, short, the time is running out. Uh, our goal is we want to work uh, further at this map. We want to extend it, we want uh, more we want to show it more than only the borders of the Roman Empire. We want to show the whole Roman Empire, cities, whatever. And because of that, we try to install uh, one, two, or three, we don't know exactly, uh, <coughs> people who are working for a year only at this map. We want to do it as a CPB grant, a community project budget is in uh, a German uh, chapter an uh, opportunity to get a bit more money to do uh, such a project, a bit more money than, than usual you need for uh, yeah, small actions. Uh, <coughs> and uh, we hopefully to get this grant and maybe the next year at, in London we can show a map that is much more than what we can show this time, and this time I think we can show something what's, what's very good, because we have to think about half a year ago, this map wasn't existing, and in only uh, some few months, two or three, the Limes project of the German language Wikipedia do it from, from nearly nothing, and it's really, I don't find words for for what they have done and work in, in this map.
Well, yet there is a problem. We have worked so hard um, on that map, but um, we cannot we cannot integrate it into the Wikipedia. Actually, we we try to 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 do it like in a little hidden away uh, site in, within the Wikipedia, but um, it was uh, knocked out immediately <laughs> as soon as I talked about it. So and and for good reason. So. Um, so, uh, but if we can't integrate it in the long run into the Wikipedia, it's not really worthwhile doing the project because um, nobody will know about it and nobody will actually um, be able to use it both as a reader and, of course, as a contributor. So, um, the problems we face are um, first the um, a lack of capacities of both the Wikimedia tool server and the OpenStreetMap server, which is giving us the maps for, for the Lemus map. And they're too small to cope with the large workload emerging through a Wikipedia article. Um, and the um, OpenStreetMap is based on a hardly scalable software. That's an, another problem. And uh, the open database uh, base license applied by OpenStreetMap is not fully compatib com compatible um, with Wikimedia. Um, well, we really want to generate more contributions to the database of the map and to make this knowledge shown in the map more accessible. So what we need is the decision of the Wikimedia Foundation to come to terms with OpenStreetMap, including privacy terms. Uh, that was one of the reasons why it was knocked down just um, the day I arrived. <laughs> and um, we need an increasing server capacities. We have been discussing that here on the hackathon. And we need to improve the code further, which also means that um, we need financial resources. I mean, this is not something can do just on a weekend or uh, within a hackathon, uh, it would need more constant uh, work on that. And uh, well, partly we show you that because we're so proud of the map, but it, to us, finally, it's only an, an application. But it thrills really uh, all the GLAM institutions we have shown to it and the Wikipedians. And uh, people say, oh, yeah, I like that. I would like to have an app for my institution as well, or for the topic of things I'm dealing with, and uh, get that into, uh, into the Wikipedia. And uh, I think this is actually the future for, for us all, to get like more interactive applications into the Wikipedia, because this is what our readers want, and this is what the GLAMs want, and this is probably what we want too. Thank you. chapter to work with Glam Outreach. I've been working there since May last year. Um, so I'm going to talk about a project we did together with the Council of the Central Museums. That's like all the, the national museums and major museums. So it's about 20 di different Glam institutions, main museums, but uh, uh, some archives and some smaller parts of uh, the palace and uh, some other things as well. Uh, what we did last year was that we, we signed an uh, agreement to cooperate because they had been approached by the Department of Culture to, to, to reach out more to students and to youths. Uh, and they realized that in order to do that, they, they had to be where people were. They couldn't force students to their websites or to their museums, so, so they wanted to be on Wikipedia because that would be more cost effective and, and easy for them to reach out to new to, to students. Uh, so all the museum appointed some pilots from within their institutions, some some volunteered, some were appointed. Uh, 
and and uh, <coughs> I worked with them. Uh, so starting off, I gave a presentation to the directors of all the the glam institutions, and that's like the the really smart people that all have their own Wikipedia articles and and are very talented and, and for being so talented they're also very stupid because the first question was like how can we assure that what our experts write on Wikipedia will stay there and it's like not gonna happen uh, it's uh, Wikipedia has come this far without your uh, collaboration maybe some of your employees have written articles on their spare time but but it's gotten this far without you working with us, so so we're hoping to to build upon that and and to take it further. But we are not gonna give you some some kind of special place to write that no one else can edit. Things will be deleted, reverted, expanded, changed everything. And the the other thing they also said was that oh, so now we're gonna have a really great article about our glam institution. So, so we had to make sure that they didn't send the people from their communications department or their uh, press people or, or anyone like that, but rather the curators and experts and the people that know about the subjects that they deal with. Um, we did a pilot workshop. We, uh, we had a couple of sessions where I trained them to, to edit the varying from three to six hours, uh, some uh, some small groups, some big groups, uh, they were working along with us and, and coming up with topics that they wanted to write about. Um, I also had help from, from volunteers that came in, uh, some, some retired people and some other people that thinks this is a good idea and helped out during the workshops. Um, also afterwards, for the, for the scheduled sessions, we some institutions said that we want to have some more help because we still don't uh, understand how to do this properly. So, so I've been around to the different institutions also to, to help them further. So during the year, I've trained about 50 people and um, a little bit about how to edit, a lot of time on how to collaborate with the community, how to use talk pages, how to discuss, how to look up the edit history as it's been written before, how to look at the talk pages as it's been discussed before, why it's in the article, why it's not in the article. Um, and they created a total of uh, a little above 100 articles, they improved several hundred articles, they uploaded uh, um, 500 images or so without proper content donations or, or batch uploading, but rather one image at the time or, or a few images at the time using the upload wizard. And uh, what they also were really good at was adding sources to, to articles. Uh, here's an example of an uh, article that was improved. You can see on this part, it's, it's quite short. It's one line, nothing more, two images. Um, it expanded to that with a lot more images and they also found that uh, there was a, two articles about the same person because he, he spelled both with a V and with a W in his middle name so they made redirections and everything that's needed to, to have only one article about every person. Um, some, some people found that the typing wasn't really their thing but they helped making institution templates. They, they uploaded images and, and were focusing on that part of the work. Uh, and then uh, being that they worked at an institution, they had access to a lot of uh, images to, to upload, so they helped illustrating a lot of articles. Uh, what we did to, to bring staff and new volunteers together was that uh, one project was a photo hunt at the Haldol Museum. It's, an, it's a house in Stockholm where an old lady started collecting things. So by the time she died she had over 50,000 items in her house. Everything 
very organized and cataloged, and uh, she donated it to the government. So, so everything is there, and, and it's a wonderful museum. If you ever come to Stockholm, go there. Uh, together with the friends of the museum, we did a photo hunt. So the the staff would bring out items from from behind glass doors, so we could take good pictures of them, and uh, they allowed us backstage and in, in some people where people are not normally allowed to go and then we could bring tripods and then take pictures with flashes. Uh, a couple of days later we had an editor on our upload thing where we got together and then the curators and staff helped us to, to build proper templates and do get every description right and then we taught them how to edit and how to change things that we misspelled and then they wrong in a way. Uh, another cool thing that happened was at the Modern Museum. Uh, this spring they had an art uh, exhibition about a artist called Hilma of Klin. And before that they had a project, they, they improved the article in Swedish and then during the article, that's a picture taken from the front desk where it says help us with more languages, Hilma on Wikipedia. So their, their goal is to have it translated to 46 different languages. And uh, during the exhibition, it's, it's really hard because the Wikidata came up and the bot uh, transferred all the into Wikilinks. So, so, but uh, during the time, it's impossible to read, I guess, but there's like six or seven language links um, added to the article within this time that's from February to, yes. to April. So that's article that was created because people, tourists came to, to the Modern Museum, realized that, oh, I know Spanish, I know Italian, I know, uh, I think it's in, in Farsi also. So, so you can see that people has visited and realized, oh, I can type in this language and, and I'll translate this article to, to my language. So it's a good way of, of improving the article before the exhibition and then have uh, tourists and visitors help you translate it to languages that they don't speak in the institution themselves. <coughs> uh, what also happened during the year is, is that they got a new mindset and it, it's kind of fun sitting there nodding to, uh, to the previous presentation. We didn't talk about it, but as you can see in this on the next slide, a lot of the things are very common between Sweden and Germany. I, I think that's a good thing, but uh, content donation, the Royal Armory uh, decided during the year that we're gonna give all our images to, to Wikimedia or Wikimedia Commons. And the, the best thing about it is that we're doing it the other way around. Usually it's like, oh, we're gonna give you the, the 800, 600 low res images. Uh, the Royal Armory are uploading about uh, 40,000 images. It's, it's a total of 1.5 terabyte of data and it's all the high resolution TIFF images. And they're keeping the, the normal JPEGs in their own da database and, and links back and forth, but they figured that it's better if people can use the high resolution TIFF images and, and uh, restore them and, and improve them and do posters and, and uh, whatever they want to do with it. So it's it's saving them bandwidth and, and the foundation will have to take care of the cost of bandwidth for all, all the images. And I think the foundation can do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, as, as Barbara pointed out also, uh, set of time to, to start doing this, don't add it to the workload, take something off from them, have them uh, do, ex do this instead of something else, not on top of what they were already doing. Realize that you're not owning the text or, or the, the content you're donating, the time you're donating. People will alter, change, work with it, do other things, keep working with it. Um, allow the, the curators and experts to, to work with what they're good at, not as, as human communications people, because that's not what they're doing. They, they know everything about their 
historical time frame or, or their small aircraft or something like that, but they're not the communication experts. Um, so what we are, we did a survey and then, then what came out of that was it's too hard for them. They don't want to be Wikipedians writing in, in wiki markup. They, so, so we're going to do a workshop on the visual editor now. I will have to learn the, to work with the visual editor to, to show them how to use that. Uh, uh, we're going to do more <coughs> fixed type monthly meetings. Uh, have them set off a day a month or something like that where they get together people from the different institutions because that will also build a network among them where they can ask questions and then think of projects for it to, to work together on. Uh, and then also, as in Germany, common projects, uh, not only one institution doing something and another doing something different, but rather focus on one area and then do something look at what, what will happen the next year, we can start working on that now and then that will start the community to see that something is happening in this area of articles so, so they can continue improving and working in that area. Uh, and uh, we are going to skip this part for now and I'll hand over to, to Ivana and then, then we'll take <coughs> questions we'll later on together. Thank you. or Portuguese is spoken. Um, why have we done this? Because, well, for adding new articles uh, to, the, to the encyclopedia and uh, media to comment, because it was, the, the contest was not only about adding articles, uh, but only for adding uh, pictures, images to comments. And we want to improve biographies well, create and create and improve biographies of relevant women uh, from our history. We noticed that there was uh, there was a lot of article missing um, about I don't know Argentina, Mexican, Brazilian women. Um, we thought that the, this was a good uh, option to motivate the community to write about these topics. Um, of course promoting Wikimedia project through media attention. We, we, uh, we did uh, dissemination through national, national wide media with this contest, so that attracts more editors to the project. And, uh, well, of course, recognize editors through prizes, because this was, uh, I think it, it was not the first time, but the second, uh, the second time that in Spanish Wikipedia, we actually did uh, physical prizes. We we give uh, two digital cameras for the winner of the the, the high score um, and uh, and the best article editor that is around the conference. And so, well, the first edition was part of the Wikipedia ten celebrations in Buenos Aires. In Buenos Aires, we did. It the celebrations in March because the Spanish Wikipedia um, was launched in, in March 
2001. And the contest uh, had uh, a duration of five months, the first one. We are now in the, in the second contest. Um, and we made up a, a jury, both of editors from the projects. I was one of the juries with Lourdes, Lourdes Cardenal, a very experienced editor for in Wikipedia, and Yusra Le Costa, Leandro Ferrari, uh, a member of Wikimedia Argentina, and also an editor. And we select two external professionals. Cecilia Sagol. She works in the in the website in the but in the online platform. Yes, for the Ministry uh, of Education of Argentina. The site is edu.ar. Edu.ar. And Paula Carri, that she's a journalist from Página 12. That's a national a nationwide newspaper in Argentina. We thought that it was really important to have uh, people from outside of the project because we as editors are often looking very close of, oh, here is a mistake, or this is not the, the right format, or, but we are writing for the general public, so we, uh, we thought that it was really important for the general public to look uh, and evaluate also the, the articles. Well, uh, we have a set of rules for the, for the, not for selecting the best article because that's not so objective. It's, it's uh, more like a general evaluation. But yes, for the uh, high score, you when you write an article, you have a score for, of course, for the length of the article, if it had references, categories internal links, uh, images. If you add a new content to Commons, you have a bonus um, for your article. And of course, uh, you have finalization by faults. For, uh, faults. We ha when, if you write uh, an article without references, that's a big fault. Or, well, you can miss categories, but you cannot miss references. So that, that was penalized in the contest. Um, for helping uh, from uh, the chapters, uh, we um, we made up a list of articles that we uh, found missing. Um, you didn't have to write about the women that we put on the list, but uh, if, uh, for example, I'm from Argentina and I knew that uh, our, an important politician or an important journalist <coughs> uh, had an article, so I put it on the list and the people who want to write on the contest and maybe didn't know about what to write can go to the list and make uh, the, the article about these, these women we, we had identified that did, did, they didn't have <coughs> their article. We did this with, uh, in collaboration with people from other, chap uh, other chapters in North America, people from Chile, Colombia, Venezuela. Well, <coughs> You can see the, the list in there. And, well, uh, we did uh, dissemination on, of course, in social media. Like, we all we all do all the time. That's uh, Facebook, we're giving Argentina's Facebook, and of course, Mexico, people from Chile or people from Mexico. And we also had um, uh, an article, well, an article. <laughs> That's so funny. A note in the in uh, Página 12, uh, national wide, nationwide uh, newspaper that had spoken about the the contest. So uh, we think that through through these kind of articles we can reach new new editors. In fact, uh, we have reached people that haven't edited before and came to to the projects uh, for this contest. But, uh, I'm really glad about it. The first contest has uh, 24 participants. 29% um, of them are women. This is a, a really good number because, well, you know that in the in the project are about 
all about uh, 9 to 10, 11 percent of, of women, it is seven women, 29 percent. Uh, you were. <laughs> I was like, what? Okay. I saw him looking at. at the, what is the <laughs> okay. Uh, and we think it's 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 a good number. It's a good proportion. In the Spanish Wikipedia, you can uh, the. It's not uh, in your user page. You can define through uh, the preferences if you are a usuario, a man, or usuaria, a woman. So uh, it's easy to identify if one user is a man or is not. And of course, the most of us uh, know each other from from uh, from the chat or from the meeting. So uh, I think it's it's quite accurate to this, even though I, I didn't know all the editors in the contest. And the participants were, uh, the most of them were from Argentina. We think that because we were there, uh, we told our friends, come on, edit, do some articles, or uh, also people from the chapter, people from Wikimedia Argentina could participate in the, in, the, in the contest, not the people from the board, of course, because, well, you, <laughs> of course, <laughs> but people from the chapter could participate. Uh, there was a lot of people from Colombia, uh, and Chile, and Mexico working in the contest. I don't know why this number is so low, because Spain is the, is the country uh, with most, most editors in Spanish Wikipedia. I don't know if the, we, we have to reach them some, some way, uh, but this, this, it was uh, one person, Maria. Uh, Maria Cepida, a brainstorm, member of the world now. <laughs> she was editing in the contest. Uh, she's an awesome editor in Spanish Wikipedia. And uh, there were, uh, in, the, in the first contest, uh, 504 new biographies. I think this is a good number for a contest in Spanish Wikipedia that are often very, very small. Um, and I think this is a, a, a success. I'm very glad about these numbers. And the people, uh, well, the women that uh, the articles were about, the most were Argentine, but there was a lot of Brazilian women even though we, we didn't have Brazilian people editing the contest, because of, of course they don't write, well, I assume, <laughs> they don't write in the Spanish Wikipedia. But there was uh, uh, one editor from the contest that uh, writes a lot about Brazilian, Brazilian scientists. So, there we have, um, Spanish, Spanish, Spanish women, even though if we didn't have uh, Spanish, what, well, only one Spanish editor in the contest. And this, this, this is the average size of uh, an article. I think it's a good number uh, for uh, an article in the encyclopedia. This is not a stub. It's, it's an average article. Alicia Castro, uh, this is, these two articles are from the contest. Alicia Castro is a politician in Argentina. And Isabel Prieto is a writer from Spain. Um, I think there are two good examples of, of the average article uh, written in the, in the contest. Well, the best article was selected uh, uh, the people uh, of the jury that came from Wikipedia selected uh, 10 articles each. I selected the 10 articles I thought that was the, the best. And we sent them to Paula Cardi and Cecilia Sagol, the external uh, people of the jury, and they select the best between, between them both. And this was the, the best article. This is User Robles Pepe. Robles, Robles Pepe is in the conference. You can chat with him. He's an amazing editor. He has written about 2,000 articles in the Spanish Wikipedia. He's really awesome. Yeah. <laughs> He's, uh, here is uh, Sugarner giving uh, in Buenos Aires, giving him the, the, the price of the, uh, the best article. Uh, the article is Telecita. Telecita is like uh, <coughs> she was a woman who died in, in a fire in Santiago del Estero, that's a province in, Buenos, uh, in Argentina, sorry. Um, she's like a popular saint in, in that province. Uh, well, he's, here he's getting his digital camera. We are really proud of him. And then we have the, the winners. Uh, 
for uh, by score. Uh, Rosaria Alasso, it's always hard for me to pronounce that, uh, had written 318 articles for the contest. Here is he getting uh, his prize. And uh, he's also participating in the actual uh, contest and he's probably going to win again. <laughs> but well, he really deserves it. He earned uh, more than a thousand points uh, and the next one is has 170. An amazing editor too. And well, now uh, we are running the second edition of this contest. Uh, it was launched in the International Women's Day, 8th of March. And uh, you can still participate. If you can write <laughs> in Spanish, you can write in Spanish. <laughs> uh, till, till the end of August. The rules are the same. We have the same set of rules. Uh, but we have uh, add a bonus to those articles with a gender perspective, for example, for instance, uh, for those articles related to women that have been work to towards equality, um, and this 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 kind of article, because uh, we know that there is uh, a lot of that kind of co uh, uh, content missing in the in our in our project. Well, the article is, I already talked about this, about this, but now the list is longer because there were people from other chapters working with us, people from Bolivia, for instance, that there weren't working before. People from Panama, the, 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 the editor that now is working in Panama, uh, organizing weak loss monuments, came into the, the, the the community and Spanish Wikipedia through this article, uh, oh sorry, through, through this contest. So I'm really proud of that because, well, uh, the, the Panamanian community is being built. Uh, she was attracted by this contest at, at first time. So I think that's a success for the contest and from the project. But people from Paraguay, of course. I'm and sorry. this time, no, it's okay. You have to give <laughs> All, we, all, we all want to go to it, so <laughs> we have to go quick. Oh, no, no, it's okay. At this time, uh, at uh, the end of last month, there were 35 participants. Uh, <laughs> 12. 34% <laughs> uh, are women, 66% are men, and then. Um, there was a lot of uh, people in this contest. Uh, contest. It didn't happen in the in the first one that uh, there were new editors, editors that maybe had never written an article before. Maybe yes, had made a few minor edits, but that had written an article for a contest, and maybe they they didn't have a chance to win because I don't know if they were write only a stub or a little article or only one article, it's really difficult to win, but it's it's really good for, for us to get new editors. Of course, we always try to, to get accomplished. Um, and the participants, well, again, uh, the, the bigger number was from Argentina. Colombia disappeared. I don't know what happened there. Uh, there are a lot of people from Mexico now. I think yeah. I think that Wikimedia Mexico has something to <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> they are really active in Twitter. Um, they are talking a lot about the contest. Uh, there we have uh, a few more Spanish editors. Rayston is not working in, in, in this contest. <laughs> he, he had a lot a lot of more responsibilities now. <laughs> Uh, but there was uh, a big number of editors uh, that I couldn't recognize from where they were. Maybe there are the Colombians there. I don't know. Well, um, we have uh, more than a thousand articles. Uh, this is uh, what the double of the, the 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 first edition of the contest. 
I have this article in here because, well, Vilma Rousseff is the, the president of Brazil. And I don't know if you can see it here, but there are two columns. The first one is right like there. And it's the article before the contest. And this is the article after Robles Pepe. That he was improving the article at uh, more like 80,000 kilowatts characters. Well, you know. And um, now the article is better even than the, the Portuguese article. So I think that's uh, an amazing job for, uh, oh, for the government, <laughs> of course, of Robert Pepe. <laughs> amazing. Amazing. I'm a big fan. <laughs> you have already noticed. OK, conclusions about this contest. Uh, you know that Wikipedia is built by volunteers, and you as a volunteer write about whatever relevant issue issue you want to. Uh, so uh, sometimes there are a lot of missing content because maybe no one uh, before had wrote about that. And with this kind of uh, contest, you can uh, motivate people to edit um, in uh, a subject you are interested in. Uh, it's easy replicable for other subjects, like, I don't know, Bolivian architecture or whatever. Uh, you can make up a, a contest and the people is willing to participate, not only for the prizes, because uh, it, in, the, in the discussion we were chatting and said, well, you, you can win a digital camera. Okay, no, 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 we want barn stars. Okay, you can have barn stars. <laughs> uh, the people like to to compete in a contest even if there's not a prize. But I think it's it's good to 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 give prizes to the, our editors that are working so so hard. Um, uh, well, I will already talk about this. Well, of course we can attract attract new editors. Uh, it's, it's a low cost project. I don't know. We have spent about 4,000 pesos. 4,000 pesos. Actually, like pesos is like not even $1,000. Um, we have uh, 1,500 new articles in the project about uh, Iber American women. And I think it's, it's uh, a good result for a low cost. And it's easy to measure. You you can uh, identify easily what is the the result of this pro uh, of your project of your uh, of your contest because you have a list with all the articles by every every editor because well you have to put points in there and then in the prices. <laughs> I think it is the well. You can check this out. This is the first contest. This is the, the second one. Of course, in, in Spanish. I'm sorry. <laughs> From Spanish Wikipedia. And that's me. And the last one. You have to check our new website. It's online for about a week. So go there. It's in Spanish too, but it, it's nice. And we like to show it. Just that is. You stay here. I'm staying here. Yes. Your comments, uh, listen to your questions. We would certainly try to answer them. And uh, well, now it's your time. Thomas. How did you manage to judge uh, the uh, uh, input of people who uh, wrote articles together? This is a question to to me. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. I, I didn't. Sorry. How did you manage? to judge the, uh, of, uh, uh, the, the, the people content to articles which uh, were made together, not just by one person, but you know, there were, for example, three authors, right? Oh, yes. During the contest, uh, one person starts the article, and it says, OK, I'm participating uh, for, the, for the contest, and, and had seven days to edit that article. Of course, it, it, it had uh, minor edits from other <coughs> editors, but in general, 
the, uh, the people from the community uh, don't edit an article if it has a, a template that it's, it's participating in a contest. So for that, that seven days, uh, and, and we judge the result after <coughs> that seven days, only that. If, okay. I, if I can add one thing to that. In, in Sweden, we did an article writing competition where we also had the uh, uh, adopting the, the person that first selected an article had the, the right to that article to, for the competition. But we also had a separate competition for the friendliest editor that, mm -hmm. that did the most help in the articles that others already had adopted. And, and a lot of people that were participating in the contest with other articles helped with the, with the articles from other participants, but some editors also didn't participate with their own article, but probably <coughs> just edited in, in the other articles that were already in the contest. And, and that was a good way to, to improve the collaboration between editors. Um, yeah, uh, I have a question to Axel and to you about uh, the contest that you are Say it's increasing the knowledge, but it's still rather low. Yeah, know. pretty much the same. They, they, they're usually complaining about their article about their climate institution, but they don't really know about the articles within their field. They, they don't know about the articles about the, their time of history or, or their kind of uh, ships or anything like that. They, they haven't done that research. More comments, more questions. Well, it's not even lunch time. Okay, Eva, uh, <laughs> do you think the, the, this kind of contest is increasing the participation of women, of women in, inside Wikipedia, or, or only the participation of men about women in Wikipedia? I really would like to know that. Uh, there were. Uh, it's hard for me to talk to you in English. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. I'll try. Um, we find that uh, in the second contest, there were uh, about four or five new editors that there were women. But I really don't know if they are more interested in editing this kind of content than men. But even though if the men are making content about relevant women, that women are being, uh, that information of that relevant women, it's, it's being. Uh, well, no, it's of course. So I think if, I don't know how to avoid gender. <laughs> I really don't know. I read it. Uh, old women don't. But uh, I don't know if this kind of contest attract more uh, women than more male editors. Attract editors. But I mean, anyway, it's excluded from higher participation of women. In the contest done in the in the, in the general project, yes. Okay. And, and I like to ask you. Well, um, throughout the, the contest, did you get in touch with the editors personally, like asking them how did you feel during the contest, or uh, are you going to edit more after the contest, or like are you doing some kind of a following up? I mean, 24 participants and this time 35 participants would still suggest that that should be possible if it is within your targets. Yes, absolutely. Uh, we had to. Maybe not in the, in the more experienced editors because we already know them. Uh, they've been editing for years. Oh, uh, but the new ones. It, it, but the new ones, yes, I think it's a good idea to get in touch with them. Uh, uh, maybe ask them uh, if, if they need some help in some way. Uh, we absolutely can do that. Mm -hmm. But you haven't planned no. to? No, no, no. All right. Well, she's yes. the, the most excellent example because I mean she got into the contest and then now 
because she's running the Big Lost Monument, not yeah. only in Panama, but yes. international wise. So that's really great. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I found that because I went to her user page, and, and there it says, uh, I get in touch with Wikipedia because of the content. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> All right, further questions, further comments? You don't have to be so polite, you could also criticize. I mean, that's what we have. We have fresh our lunch. Okay, let's go to it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.